I think many people have got the gist now that <clears throat> justice and justice being seen to be done is one part of my life. The other part is what I'm going to show you now. It's on the news and I've been talking about this for the last year about how people with, um, who have autism, uh, Asperger's, are put in jails, literally. One girl, Bethany, which I've put a link to in a previous post, has been in a one room cell 12 foot by 7 foot for a, for nearly two years and we think that we live in a uh, in a, a society that takes care of the people that need to be taken care of and that just doesn't mean in mental hospitals or hospitals it means allowing people to live to breathe to go out in the fresh air and not to be served food through a hatch like a murderer has been in the past even the prisoners get more better treatment than people with autism. I want to record this as it is coming on the news now, and then I'm, I'm posting it. Because if you think that you're in a society that is fair, that is compassionate, that, that people care, then look at yourself in this. And remember, this, this sign here, point the finger. You point the finger at somebody, three are pointing back at you. So this young girl here, and li just, li just listen to the story. This is the caring society that we live in. This is how blinkered we are. Some of us, many of us, not all of us. I'm not blinkered. I see this happening. So watch and weep. BBC's Chris Morris there. Now, a teenage girl who was put in isolation booth at a school 245 times has called for them to be banned. The pupil who's autistic tried to kill herself in the booth and has said she felt alone, trapped, and that no one seemed to care. Her mother said for months she was unaware of what was happening to her daughter, and when she found out, she was devastated. She's threatening to take legal action against the government unless they review how isolation booths are used. The girl, whom we've called Sophie, told the Victoria Derbyshire programme in a letter what it was like to be in the booth. Her words are spoken for her. During year seven, I was bullied by my peers. Teachers placed me in isolation. This made me feel alone. During years seven to nine, I was placed there whenever they felt necessary, which was at least one lesson a day, or days at a time. I decided I'd rather die than be in isolation because of the mood it left me in. I felt alone and trapped at school. For such a long time, I felt as though it would be best as no one seemed to care anyway. I begged the teachers to ring my mum as I didn't want to be alone anymore. They then refused and took my phone away, leaving me and a teacher I didn't know in an enclosed room. The room has six booths with a small workspace and sides too. You cannot see other people. You have to sit in silence and be escorted to the toilet, which is embarrassing. That day, I took an overdose. I didn't want to live anymore. I then spent a few days in hospital, then a week at home. After I returned to school, there onwards, things got worse. From there, the exclusions started. I was dreading each day as I would often have panic attacks and feel claustrophobic. I feel as though isolation rooms should be banned as they tend to make students feel isolated and helpless, knocking their self-esteem. Due to the amount of stress and trauma throughout school, I now suffer with depression and anxiety. The words of Sophie, who was put in an isolation booth 245 times. Well, her mother, whom we've called Philippa, told the Derbyshire programme how the use of isolation booths affected Sophie. Her words are spoken for her. There was no break time. There was a lunch. She would be taken to lunch. She'd be taken with a teacher and then escorted back to the isolation room. But because my daughter has packed lunches, she would have her packed lunch in the room. It shouldn't be allowed to go on in schools. The whole reason that they have isolation units or booths was to deal with incidents that were happening at the time, but it's become that the schools are using them as a prolonged punishment. I was traumatised. I can't even begin to explain how it makes me feel, knowing that every day I'd sent her into the school and they were placing her in this situation and that she felt 
that alone that she wanted to take her own life because she felt like she had no life. She wasn't allowed to be a part of any school life. I feel like I failed, like I failed her as a parent and that the school that should be held responsible, that there should be someone that makes the rules and the schools are just making whatever rules they see necessary because they're allowed to. They're allowed to run the isolation booths however they see fit because there is no guidelines. The mother of the girl was repeatedly put in isolation.